Thank you, Father Olafson, Father Kelly, Bishop Boye, Father Mike, Reverend Fathers, virtuous business leaders and their spouses, and my dear brothers. Um, if any of you are familiar with the HBO series Band of Brothers, um, and previously the book, you'll know the great dichotomy that is drawn between Lieutenant Spears, uh, don't worry, Spears is not my priest hero, um, <laughs> Lieutenant Spears and uh, Dyke. And the difference is that Dyke is afraid to make any decision at all. Um, and this is the, the aspect that sticks out to me the most about my priest hero, Father Dan Westerman, of the parish of St. John the Baptist in Ypsilanti. It's his, his willingness, his courageous willingness, to dive into uncomfortable um, decisions, hard decisions, to be made for the good of his flock. Um, and he makes these decisions, guys, because he loves Jesus, and he, and he wants his flock to be with Jesus. So I just want to share with you a couple of stories. Um, one story is, is kind of just funny, actually. But um, there, so my parish is in a pretty rough city, um, Ypsilanti. It's not, not a terrible, awful city, but it's not the best. Um, but there's a frat house across from the parish that's kind of crazy. There's been several arrests made at this frat house. Um, and one night, they were out just like partying, and it was really loud, and there was loud music till like, yeah, till four in the morning. And Father Dan couldn't get any sleep. So, un uh, like, he, normal people would have just called the police, make a noise complaint. Father Dan just walked straight into this frat house, told them to turn the music off, and they did it. Um, <laughs> another story, if, if, you, if any of you are, um, which I'm sure you are aware of, of the um, ab absolutely disgusting proposal that was passed last year, pro Proposal 3. Um, during that time, as people were kind of voting on it, after, after, after the decision had been made that it would pass, um, Father Dan actually preached to the parish um, and asked everyone that if they had knowingly and willingly voted yes to this proposal, that they wouldn't receive the Eucharist. Um, and again, this is not a, from a position of um, anger or pushing any sort of agenda. No, he was just genuinely concerned about the good of his parish. Um, and then the last two stories pertaining to this uh, have to do with me, because I'm a coward. Um, so before entering seminary, I basically was just doing the best I possibly could to live my own plan, to do what I wanted to do. And so I, uh, it was about May, no, it was, it was February, no, it was May, it was May when uh, I, I had figured out, you know, I'm going to study economics, go to University of Michigan. This was 2021. Uh, I'm going to go do these things. And so I had spiritual direction with Father Dan. And, uh, and I, you know, we were walking. I was telling him about this. And he said, great, is that what you want to do? Um, I said, yeah, I think so. But next two years of my life planned out. Can't, can't go wrong. I feel safe. Um, he said, great, is that what Jesus wants you to do? And I was like, shoot. I did not think about that for a moment. And so he just pushed me there, but like very gently and very compassionately. Um, and he said, like, Seppi, you're, you're, you're called to do something more than just what you want to do. You're, you're called for more, and you were made for more. You were made to give yourself totally and completely to Jesus. And that's the thing about Father Dan is that he, he, do, he doesn't want to accept anything but his, from his spiritual children, except that they give everything totally and completely to Jesus. And the last story, um, again, me, uh, before I entered seminary, I was spent the year discerning. It wasn't very good discernment. I wasn't taking it super seriously. And uh, as is evidenced by the story, I had met a beautiful Catholic girl, and I figured, you know what? This is it. Let's just get married. I've discerned. Done. <laughs> um, I'm good, Bishop. Don't worry. Um, and so I remember meeting with him, and I told him this, um, and he was like, "Hold up, hold up, hold." He's like, "Let's let's slow down, basically." And, and he was like, "Let's not call it discerning, okay?" Um, and he he basically right then and there he was like, "I'm not." We had we had a a planned kind of spiritual direction group um, that we that we're meeting every every couple weeks. And it was coming up that Saturday, and he said, I'm not going to tell you you can't go to this meeting, but it wouldn't be very helpful to you at all. Um, so right then and there, in that, in that place, he just said, so you can either 
end things with this girl and go to that meeting, or you cannot and stop going to the meeting. And, and right there, he was like, so what's it gonna be? Like, make your decision, dude. Um, I made my decision. So I would literally, I would literally not be here if it weren't for him and if it weren't for his willingness to just enter into the fire. Um, Fulton Sheen talks about how seminarians are, are going to be called on to be better priests when they see priests not only living their priesthood, but living their victimhood. Um, and Father Dan has done this so well for me, and he continually does it. Um, and he does it because he knows who he is. He, know he's, he knows he's a son of the Father. Um, and all he wants is for his children uh, to be with Jesus. And that's, that's simply everything, everything to him. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.